Welcome back to our channel, The Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design. This is Akio, and today I am going to show you how to make a twisted wire earring using a grasshopper. The reason I want to use a grasshopper for this modeling is that every stage of the modeling is parametric in grasshopper. Parametric modeling is a history-based modeling method that enables design automation. You can change the size of the earring, how much you wanted to have an opening, how much you wanted to twist the wire, and how the earring diameter should be. So let's get started. This is the arc component. And don't forget to get bifocal. Bifocal helps to see each component's name. When you press the arc component on canvas, you will see the arc on top construction plane. We want arc to be standing up. Let me change to um, the full name. So the plane should be XZ. You will see the arc in the front viewport. The radius, which is going to be the radius of the arc, I would say 10 to 20. Then I will disable the preview of the, the plane. For the angle, get a domain. We will get the radian. Now what this radian does is it will convert from radian to the degree. I would do 0 to 90, do 360, so connect to the, this radian, and I make a copy of it, and this is 360. Now I'm going to make a twisted wire and throw it on this curb. Getting a length component. So we we'll measure the length of this curb. And placing the point at zero and at the end of the length of this curb and connect those two points to create a line. Now we need to have playing on this line. We are going to create the three planes per frame, number slider from 0 to 1.00. What we're going to do is reparameterize this curve. So right click, reparameterize. Reparameterize means to set the curve from 0 to 1 instead of the real size. So we can set the curve in percentage from 0 to 1 instead of the real length value. So I'm going to make a uh, copy of this. The first one, I will set 0. And next one is about the halfway. It's about the halfway, maybe a little bit more and uh, last one is the uh, one then we will connect to this line then you will see in this construction plane um, here is a zero and uh, this is the middle one so when i move it to the middle it's going to be exactly in a 50%. You can do 0 0.75, so I would just leave it right here. And then we're going to create a polygon. So 
three polygons. And number of size is, I would make it uh, the three to, let's say, eight sided. And let's say I would set it to the six. And connect to the each polygon. And then you start to see the polygon. And then we're going to do sweep one rail. So sweep one. The rail is going to be the line. And this is a cross section curve. Connect in the order with the shift key pressed. So the radius is going to be 1 to 5.00. 0, 0. And this is going to be the middle, the middle one. That's going to be thicker and for now, I would just leave it like that. Now I need to twist this poly surface, so I need a twist component. Then X. So this axis is the line. A twist needs an axis, and this A uh, can do full name. So here is an angle. So this usually set radiant. So I would change to the degree. I don't usually work with a radiant. And then I would do um, zero less than thousand. Then I would need Boolean toggle for infinite and rigid option. I am getting a custom preview in the meantime. The reason this poly surface doesn't look right is this rigid option is true. When it changes to the false, you start seeing the twist. Then need another Boolean toggle to set infinite, true, or false. This is an infinite no, and when you, you change it, it would twist it to the end. That is a difference. Lastly, we're going to flow. Flow geometry, which is a twist. The base is a line. And then target curve with is an arc. And don't forget to cap the earring. So here we can do infinite no or you can do infinite yes. You can see the fine details at the end of the earring. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And feel free to 
leave any comment below. I will see you at the next video.